That was the Songbird, an absolutely insane 3D printed turntable from the team over at Frame Theory 3D that I've been putting together for about the past month here. So in today's video, we'll talk about the project. I'll give you all the information needed for you to uh, find out more or if you're interested in making one of these for yourself. I'll talk about things like the build, the calibration process, and just my final thoughts on the whole process as a whole. Uh, I'm really excited to get into it. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Jumping into it, Frame Theory 3D is a UK-based startup ran by the duo Charlie and Kieran. They reached out to me earlier this year in February, letting me know that they had been working for the better part of a year on this 3D printable turntable called the Songbird and asked if I was interested in building one myself. And although there wasn't all the details available right away surrounding it, there was enough in there for me to know that this project looked absolutely insane and I said yes. I spent a lot of time on this channel talking about different 3D printers and making tutorials on either things like slicers or upgrades or filament, which I do love doing. But one thing I've been wanting to sprinkle in there is actual 3D printable projects. And the Songbird just seemed like the perfect project to jump into. The team let me know that there would be two versions of this kit available, a maker kit, which would allow you to basically get the STL files and they would ship you the hardware required and it would allow you to print out the parts on your own printer and a full kit for those that maybe don't have access to a 3D printer that does come with all of those 3D printed parts. I actually did want to release this video a couple weeks ago, so I did want to say right away that this is a Kickstarter, the project is live, and links will be in the description if you do want to find out more or back this project to make sure you're in one of the earlier waves of the kits that are being sent out. Of course, I opted for the maker kit, so they sent me all the STL files and shipped out the box with all the rest of the hardware. On the printing side of things, they recommend going with PETG because it's got a little bit of flex, it's got very low shrinkage, and it makes it a perfect candidate for the material to use in this project. And the very well-documented PDF that they provided has everything split up into almost different color categories. So that way, if you want to make the turntable two-toned like I did, you can easily do so by seeing which parts would need to be printed in which color to, to do that. All the parts were printed out in eSun black and blue PTG, and I did all 15 parts on my modified Creality Ender 3. Uh, there are some print parameters provided in the guide, so that way you make sure that you are successful in doing uh, things according to what they recommend. Uh, and they did state that you can actually print up to a 0.3 millimeter layer height. So if you're trying to crank out this project as quick as possible, you can certainly opt for that. I was not in a rush, and so I printed everything out at a 0.2 millimeter or 200 micron layer height. And none of the parts required supports. And really any 3D printer that's the size of like Ender 3 or bigger will have enough of a footprint to print out all of these parts. As far as the provided settings within the guide, they were all great with the exception of the fact that um, they recommended using brims. And certainly if you do not, like if you've got issues with adhesion or you don't have your bed leveling locked down, I would say that having a brim is not a bad idea because uh, it will help to prevent warping. But being that I know my 3D printers and the PEI on uh, the Creality Ender 3 that I have does a really good job of sticking, I wish that I had not done the brim because the brims, cleaning up the brims was one of the most tedious aspects of this build. So I will say again, although it says brims, if you trust your 3D printer and have been printing long enough to know that these parts aren't going to warp, you don't need them at all. But if you are having issues with the parts, definitely a brim per the recommendations can help to prevent any warping or peeling away from your bed. Aside from a 3D printer, you're also going to be needing a soldering iron and that is just to insert the brass heat, uh, heat press inserts and that is going to be like the first major step after printing out all of the components. So um, being that that's the only thing you actually need to use a soldering iron for, you don't need anything fancy and even just a really cheap kind of non-controllable non one that you plug into a wall will work absolutely fine. The guide that the team put together is fantastic, but that does not mean that it's an easy install. There was quite a few times where I realized that I either had grabbed the wrong screw or had to just double check things to make sure I was following things step by step. And I had to remind myself not to over torque a printed part. Um, granted, they used the heat inserts for a lot of it, but there was one piece that I torqued down a little bit too hard and it cracked right away which was just a little bit annoying um, because I had to stop, I was getting excited assembling and I had to stop, reprint out the part, disassemble a little bit and then put it back together. So I would say the key things are take your time and 
Uh, make sure you follow the instructions step by step and do not over torque things because again, they are printed parts and you really don't need to put that much torque into it for them to secure onto each other. As I mentioned a moment ago, the only thing you need the soldering iron for is to get all of those uh, heat inserts installed into the printed parts. And for the wiring, it's all going to be very simple using screw down terminals or uh, just basically plugging in to a pin. So you won't have to do any sort of crazy soldering for this project. And although this project was something I worked on over the course of weeks, little by little, because I had a lot of other things going on, I would say that if you had all the printed parts done and had everything that you needed in front of you, this could certainly be a day build should you want to rush through it and just get the finished product done. Once you've assembled the songbird and bolted all the pieces together, you will move on next to the calibration guide. And there are quite a few steps here, but trust me, there is nothing too crazy. The first thing you will need to do is level the songbird. And this is done by adjusting the three feet. It's quite simple to do because on the actual rotating portion of the songbird, there are three little bubble levels. And so all you're gonna be doing is basically like slowly turning it while adjusting the feet and doing your best to get all the bubbles inside of the tiny black circle on those bubble levels. It took me no more than a couple minutes and you will be good to go on that. Once done with that, you will need to set the tracking weight for the actual arm of the turntable. This is done by printing out a uh, 3D printed, it's included with the STLs, but a 3D printed kind of scale or weight and you will basically be placing the tip of the arm on there and just adjusting the weight on the back until it balances this printed part. It's again, really simple to do and only a couple of minutes to get that dialed in. Next up is aligning the cartridge arm. For this, you'll need to head over to a linked website and download just this, uh, I guess, kind of grid that you will then put on top of the turntable. And just with that loose cartridge, make sure that it lines up with the designated points on there and then clamp it down. It is also a very simple thing to do. Uh, and the final calibration process is setting the RPMs. And this is done the easiest way I've seen to do it is basically by grabbing a app on your phone. On iPhone, I did download one from the app store where you essentially just set it on the turntable and have it spin around. And for uh, the bottom of the motor, there is little adjustment screws. So for one of them, you'll want to make sure you get it set as close to 33.3 RPMs and you'll want to flip the switch. And for the other one, you'll want to get it set to 45 RPMs. Again, this might not sound uh, it'll make a lot of sense of me verbally saying it, but once you look at the guide, it's it's pretty straightforward. Full disclosure, I was a little bit intimidated when I got to the calibration guide and having that I've never owned any kind of a turntable in my life was like, oh my God, like, is this gonna be over my head? But the guide is fantastic and the team has been awesome at responding to any questions. So I'm sure they'll have no problem answering any questions you may have. And if they see recurring questions from people that are assembling the kit, I don't doubt that they will uh, very quickly integrate that into their existing guide. Aside from the kit, I did need to pick up a preamp, which I ordered off of Amazon, a few different cables, and the power cable they sent to me was a EU power cable. So I also ordered one off of Amazon, which was very inexpensive. I think it was like a $4-ish power, uh, power cable. But if you're interested in ordering the same preamp that I have that I know uh, works or any of the cables, I can put links in the description over to those uh, as well. So you can make sure you purchase the same ones that I used. When I was done with the calibration and I placed a record record on top of the songbird, turned it on and heard music coming out of it. I was absolutely ecstatic. Erin was sitting over on the couch in the living room and she looked over at me when I was super excited and told me that I looked like a little kid because of just how happy I was. And I will say that again, this, this uh, kit assembly does require some thinking and it is a bit of a process, but it is so worth it. And the end result is just absolutely insane. I'm sure many of you want to know how does it actually sound, and to that I would answer great. However, because I've never owned a turntable or any form of record player, I don't have any basis to, to base that off of, so my opinion might not mean a whole lot. And of course, I could play some music, but because of YouTube being YouTube, it would likely get muted, or uh, YouTube would, would basically demonetize the video because of any copyright music being played. So the team over at uh, Frame Theory did link me to a clip of the songbird actually playing some music. So if you do want to see that, I will absolutely place a link to that in the description of this video as well. If you've got a 
printer that's collecting dust, if you've got someone that you just don't know who, like what to get a gift for them or what kind of gift to get for them, or if you've been looking for an epic project to do, I would highly recommend checking out the Songbird. I love that most of the parts in this kit are pretty much off the shelf components that even if years down the road, you need to source them on your own, you should have very little issue doing so. And also the customizability aspect of it, because you're able to 3D print out all the parts, you get to choose the color, you can upgrade it. If you break something, you can just reprint it like I did, which is really nice instead of getting a kit for something where if you break it, you've got to wait for the manufacturer or you've got to figure out a way to sort of repair this broken thing. So it is a huge plus and I'm always looking for cool projects to sort of showcase what 3D printers can do and the, the Songbird is such a badass functional print. Seeing this makes me beyond excited for the future of 3D printed products and I really cannot wait to see what Frame Theory 3D comes up with next. And that has been the Songbird. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer those questions. Or of course, if I don't know the answer, I will have no problem reaching out to the manufacturer, or in this case, Frame Theory 3D to get those answers for you. Like I said, I'll place links below down to where you can check out the Kickstarter and find out more back it if you want. I'll place links to the things that I bought off of Amazon. And if there's anything else I said I'll place a link to, I will do my best to do that in the description of this video as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I will also place links down below over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for each of you to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.